North of the border, in Ayrshire, an old rival is also taking up the challenge, training alone in the backyard of his house. Graham O'Bree, unknown and unemployed, has had a patchy career in cycling. He's been on the dole for six months, but now he's training hard for a comeback. He's decided to have one more crack at the big time. At 27, O'Bree knows it's now or never. The maverick from air has decided to pit himself against the Olympic champion. He too is going for the world one-hour record. A major influence in that was Chris Borman himself. Because Chris had won the Olympics, and it was a surprise to me, and I don't know if it was a surprise to Chris, but uh, the fact that he won that gold medal, and basically I thought, well, blimey, wait a minute. Uh, I used to be able to take this guy on. Sometimes beat him, sometimes he would beat me. But I was taking him on. I didn't re didn't realise that we're both at that level. And that's it. Basically, that was a factor in making a difference. Most of the top riders are afraid to tackle the hour record because when you go for the hour record, it is reported throughout the whole world. If you fail, it can get a serious setback to your career. The trouble is, for me, I didn't even have a career. My career was down the skids before it even started. All the odds are stacked against O'Bree, who, unlike his well-equipped rival, has to train alone. O'Bree has only his intuition to go on. What a lot of cyclists are involved in is a culture where they're involved in computer analysis, heart rate monitors, timed exercises. But for me, that, that doesn't really work out because I don't have the access to specialist people who know exactly what these things mean. What I've got is a system already that, that I know works. It's basically listening to how my body feels, which is a very complicated machine in itself. But uh, I do use the huge gear on the bike. I've been doing some strength training to cope with this big gear on hills in Scotland, which is basically keeping the bike in a big gear and forcing your pedals round, it's more or less the same as doing weight training, except on the bike. And for me that, that tends to work. The, uh, the most difficult part to produce in this bicycle for me was the narrow bracket itself, which in the end uh, I managed to use an old washing machine. But what I had to do is take the washing machine to, to bits and uh, I discovered that behind the drum there was these bearings which whizzed round at something like 1200 revs a minute and the, the washing machine continued to be useful and I managed to use the side panel uh, of the washing machine for these parts here which uh, forms a box section, gives a lot of strength to the bicycle So you had to make that box section? This, is, uh, this tube continues on down, the same as this part and this is an, an addition to the, that tube which forms an extra box section for strength there's a lot of stress in this part of the bicycle, and it, uh, it was ideal. So it's part bicycle, part washing machine? Part bicycle, part washing machine. But unfortunately I can't pedal at that rate. <laughs> 1200 revs a minute. But can he pedal fast enough for a new one hour record a week before Boardman's attempt? He certainly can. This unknown amateur rider from Air in Scotland is now smashing the most coveted record of them all. His radical style, his homemade bicycle. The world hour record is going to fall to Graham O'Bree by the end of this lap. There's no doubt about that now. 51.596 kilometres. Francesco Moser's record of eight years ago has gone to a rider on a homemade bicycle.